All right, we had some free agency signings. We had some qualifying offers accepted. I think the leading news stories are that Jake Odorizzi accepts his qualifying offer from Minnesota, which we'll get into. Jose Abreu accepted his qualifying offer from the Chicago White Sox. That's interesting. Will Smith gets signed by Atlanta, and Darren O'Day also signed with Atlanta. They are trying to bolster up their bullpen and move fast because, as we've said on this show multiple times, the relief pitching market was not big, and it's kind of done now. It's almost dried up. Yeah, let's let's do relievers in Atlanta first because they're they're kind of the two – well, two of the major topics. A, Atlanta <laughs> is – the, they're they're trying to get their free agency done with. They signed two relievers. One of them is pretty impactful. Will Smith, um, he, he was on the Giants. He's been really solid for a long time. I think it's interesting. He got more money than Adovino and Zach Britton. Not a lot more, but a decent chunk. And I think if you asked around the league, a lot of people would lean Adovino and Britton over Will Smith. Um but I, I don't know. Atlanta, maybe they saw the market and they were like, let's do no joke and get this guy. Um, and that was obviously a weakness for them in, in the postseason. So good for them. I, I, I'm kind of interested by their route. Um, but yeah, they brought back flowers, Marquecas, and they signed two relievers. I'm wondering, I mean, are they kind of tapped out? Do they got one more move or what, what's going on in the ATL? Well, I, have seen links of Bumgarner that there's a serious, yeah. they're, they're going to make an offer, which makes sense. You have it making sense. So that's kind of cool. But good for Atlanta, man. This market was not good, right? We said that a lot. Yeah. If you wanted to get the free agents that you believed in, you believed in and they were, I mean, what do we have here? They were, Will Smith was the like highest regarded free, uh, free agent relief pitcher. Will Harris is behind him. He's still available. But then you also got Darren O'Day for you know backup purses just to bolster it when you got the top guy will smith was kind of the top guy available so good for them yeah the the only wild card in the in the relief pitching pool is Dallin batances he's got dirty stuff but he missed did, all of last year he's gonna miss part of next season no did you um, hear the I, update no Dallin said he's not gonna miss any of next year oh there you go that's I, I thought i said that and then you talked me off the ledge I, I heard – well, I, I don't know if you can trust him. Okay. Well, he might miss start of next year. He um, said that by December this winter, he will be fully recovered from his Achilles injury and have a normal offseason by December, which I just find very hard to believe and also really good for free agent stuff. Yeah, or <laughs> could be lying a little bit. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. Um, I think there's a little embellishment yeah. there. Um, and yeah, I, maybe I undersold Will Smith in, uh, a little bit because he's been Kansas City, Milwaukee, San Francisco Giants. If you take out his rookie year, which we just did with Mike Trout, um, he's at a three oh three ERA. Three hundred twenty one innings. I didn't do that with Mike Trout. Um, you yeah yeah you did. He um, run he run he wasn't a rookie. He just got it was like a call up. He yeah I mean that's I'm I'm taking out Will Smith's first season um he started games that year <laughs> he started 16 games he's only started one since so I think I think that can be an outlier for Will Smith as well yeah, yeah that's fine um, I'm just saying Trout's rookie year he yeah. won rookie of the year yes uh his first season playing baseball let's settle there um and Will Smith was great last year 276 ERA 34 saves for the Giants 96 strikeouts in 65 innings, so good for Atlanta. Um, you know, he's he's not the flashiest name, but he did have a good year, and um, he's kind of a fun guy. We we saw him on a couple breakdowns. Um, hopefully, uh, ho- hopefully he fits with that Atlanta squad. Should uh, they? What is their identity? Went to high school in in Georgia, Jim. Perfect fit. Love it from there wow that is wildly amazing can we get to these qualifying offers because they're what's super interesting yeah you you want to go yeah because we talked about this a little bit i don't know what platform jake odorizzi accepts the qualifying offer from minnesota because (laughs) they kind of damned him by making a qualifying offer because the way we saw the market play out is these teams so the rules are if you 
get a qualifying offer and you say, no, no, thank you. I'm going to go to free agency. Well, then any team that signs you has to give Minnesota a draft pick as compensation since you said no to the qualifying offer. And the whole point was to incentivize teams to offer qualifying offer qualifying offers to their players that have been with their team because it's good if you have guys coming back and loyalty and that type of stuff well, and it, it used to be the the generic stereotype was oh our 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 guy is going to be here for the first six years and then he'll sign with the yankees or he'll sign with the dodgers um so when that happened the idea was that if you were the twins if you were whatever other team you were sorry twins fans qualifying offer example is that if that player leaves you still get a first round pick so you could build your farm system and things like that now those used to be a lot less (laughs) valuable in major league baseball now they are a pretty decent form of currency yeah the draft picks and trades and all that we've learned that they're they're super huge and keichel didn't get signed because he had a draft pick attached to him. And a lot of other guys, Moustakis, didn't get signed because he had a draft pick attached to him. So if Odorizzi says no to this qualifying offer, teams may want to pay him the same money or more, but they don't want to do it with that draft pick attached, and he could be waiting all winter. So his hands are kind of tied because he's pretty deep on the free agent pool right now, and he's got a draft ticket patch, so he's just like, I have to take this. Because this is money on the table right now. So yeah. the qualifying offer system kind of sucks. A lot of systems in the CBA suck right now. Good for Jake Odorizzi because it is a decent chunk of money. And he does get to stay and be with his team. And good for Minnesota for the fans that like Odorizzi. And bad for the fans that don't like him. I'm not sure how many are go each way. But it is just such an interesting trickle effect with the CBA and all the rules and shit. Yeah, and it's it's strong... Uh, the, the thing that is saving the qualifying offer currently is that you can only be offered it once. So Oda Rizzi, he can be offered it this year. He accepted it. So if he goes out and he has another good year, he will hit free agency with, with no hassle or anything. Um, it's kind of tough because he, he probably could have gotten a, a four-year 15 year, four, four-year 15, I don't know, three fifteen, four for 12 um, and kind of would have been his last contract, and now he's got to go out and do it again. Uh, so, so we'll see. Hopefully, it ends well. Um, and yeah, I think if you're the other starting pitchers, you're you're a little excited. If you're the if you're that second tier, if you're the Ryu's, um, if you are the Kershaws, that that kind of tier, I you know that's that's one other one less guy who's fighting for money from a team like the Twins that probably wasn't going to go out and and shell out money for for someone they weren't familiar with. I don't know. Maybe that got a little weird at the end. You don't Um, know. So tell me about this Abreu one. He accepts the qualifying offer because no one wants a DH anymore. Same reason why J.D. Martinez didn't opt out of the Red Sox. He saw the market for first base slash DH guys and said, oh, shit, no one really has a spot or wants this. So I'll just opt back into the Red Sox contract, which is good money. And I think Abreu probably saw the same thing. And his team was like, "Uh, this is the only team that really needs you. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. I mean, the the teams that are looking for DHs are the White Sox in Texas. And basically Chicago kind of brought theirs back. Jose Abreu did play 125 games at first base. He's not special over there. I, I think he could probably pick it for another year, maybe two. Um, he's he's going to be 33 next season. Uh, so, yeah, th- this one's kind of tough for me because it's nice that he stays in Chicago with the White Sox, um, and he's he's about as steady as a hitter as they come. Uh, casually did lead the league in RBIs this year. Uh, so, yeah, I, I don't know. It, it's nice for that part of it. For Jose Abreu, uh, again, another guy that you hope he has another solid Jose Abreu year because if he goes into next year going to be 34, can't really play first base anymore, um, like his market's going to suck. Yeah. Uh, so that's that's uh, that's the tough part of this whole qualifying offer thing. Yep. And then, I mean, yeah, that's interesting. But, yeah, he better have a good year. Have a good year and go go get a two year good money or three year decent money contract to DH first base somewhere after that. But yeah, it's it's uh, I and and that's 
I, I think most of you are with us, but if if that would be the overlying thing, this if Jose Abreu hit free agency this year, he probably gets three years, fifteen mil per. Um, instead, he's getting one for seventeen, one for eighteen essentially, which is more for this year. But if he has a bad year, he might <laughs> screw himself. He'll have a great year. Going to get Puig yeah. in right field. They're going to have fun. Go. Puig. They'll have like a little. Yeah, they got a Cuban connection. Moncada got MVP votes. So this Huge. this big graph, I don't know who made this, but I'd give him a shout out if his name was on here. John Becker, that's who it is. My uh, sophomore biology teacher. Here are the teams that are out, according to John Becker, who's done a great job keeping up with this, on Garrett Cole. Baltimore, Toronto, yep. Detroit. Seattle, Colorado, fully out, Jake. Okay? Just okay. keeping everyone up to date. And that's all. That was that update. Okay, interesting. <laughs> um, I'm going to rule out Kansas City. Um, I, I didn't see them. Uh, yeah, I don't know. And I, I think, how about, how about this to, to kind of tie things off a little bit? A, what you said with J.D. Martinez accepting his option, not a huge market for DHs right now. Um, and the other, so the guys that do have qualifying offers attached to them, and it's something to watch Cole, Rendon, Strasburg, it's not going to matter at all. Nope. Um, do you think it affects Wheeler at all? No. No, because I, 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 I'm with you. I think a team falls in love with him a little bit. Um, what about Bumgarner Donaldson? Yeah, maybe a little bit. Like money wise, it feels like you want to get those guys into camp a little bit, but it it, I mean, someone like Josh Donaldson, you know, you're gonna sign him what two three years? He's kind of getting older. He's got a little bit of an injury history. To te- teams might be a little fickle over that first first round pick. Um, and the only other guy out there is Marcel Ozuna, um, which I don't know. He's he's going to be an interesting one to watch. I don't think it affects him if if you convince yourself that he's going to be your slashing right fielder for the next four seasons. I I think you're okay with giving it up. Yeah, I think so. I think so as well. I have uh do one more thing and then we'll end this. But this is I think if I keep up with this over the off season, and I'm not keeping up with it. John Becker is, <clears throat> but I'll share it. Yeah. He he has <clears throat> he has in here. Team has a legitimate shot, has made an offer, or are in the top candidates. And there's a couple now that he has. Brett Gardner okay. and the Yankees. It's kind of obvious, yes. but there's been reports now that they are working on something. He has Madison Bumgarner and the Atlanta Braves. The Braves have made, they are a top-tier candidate. They have have interest. It's like noted, right? Yeah, uh, he, li- he likes the AL East for Mad Bum, huh? Or the NL East. Does he? Yeah, he's got he's got Atlanta with the green, but he's got Philly and Washington with the baby blue, which is interested. <laughs> yeah, but it's not him. Then he links the tweets if you click those the blue. Right, right, have right. That. Uh, Strasburg with Washington, and that's because they made an offer already. Yep. And then there was another one that was interesting to me. Oh, Howie Kendrick with the Tampa Bay Rays. Hmm. Yeah, I mean, it could be a raise move. I, I guess if you're fully bought into what Howie Kendrick was last year and you're not one of the front offices saying he's older and he's going to regress back to the mean, yeah, I, I guess that would that would be a good raise risk-reward move. Like, if you get the, the 950 OPS Howie Kendrick, yeah. And then for, for Alex Gordon, what's going on with Alex Gordon? He's got team is out on player and is not interested for every single team in the league. And then he has the Royals as being very interested. Has every other team come out and said no (laughs) to Alex Gordon? (laughs) I don't, I don't know. Feel, feels a little Wainwright ish. Um, who, by the way, Adam Wainwright resigned with the Cardinals. So that's good. And Ryan Zimmerman has interest from the Washington nationals, Mr. National. Yeah, I bet. Yeah, I bet. So that's the end of that. And that's the end of the show. And we thank you for hanging out with us. And we appreciate it. And Jake, any final words? Uh, thanks for seeing us. We'll see you guys, what, Monday, Tuesday? We'll, we'll see if there's any other breaking news. Yeah, let's we'll, get a trade. Let's get a trade. We'll be back Monday, and then Jake and I will be traveling, and we'll maybe do some shows together. 
later on. Yeah, if you're if you're one of our GMs that listens, do a trade. That way we'll know you're a fan. Thank you. Thank you, all our GMs that listen. Do the trade. Jake sucks.